Hey students, this video is going to go over um, Le Chatelier's principle. So let me just pull this up really quick. It's the next few slides in your PowerPoint. So we talked about um, equilibrium being where the forward reaction rate is equal to the reverse reaction rate. The concentrations of the two are not the same. It's just that the concentrations of each one have stayed constant. So we can do things to our system where the reactions are taking place. Um, we can change concentrations and stress the system. And when we stress a system, your equilibrium is gonna shift to either the forward reaction or it will shift to the reverse reaction in order to reestablish that equilibrium. So when it shifts to the right, that means it's shifting towards the forward reaction, reactants to products, in order to make more product. If the reaction shifts to the left, that means the reverse reaction is being favored and we're trying to make more reactants. Now we do talk about this equilibrium constant, um, and this will be talked about more next week also, but the equilibrium constant just uh, very generic is the concentration of your products over the concentration of your reactants. So it's always products over reactants. So when the forward reaction rate is favored, um, that means you have more products, and so your K value will be large because the concentration of the product is greater than the concentration of the reactants. If the reverse reaction is favored, the uh, concentration of the products is low and the concentration of the reactants is high, so your K value would be small. So there's different things that we can do to stress your system, stress the reaction. So the first thing is concentrations. And so this picture over here on the right does a good job, I think, of showing what we're doing with the concentration here. So when we're at equilibrium, the, con the concentrations of each stay equal. So you can see that the concentration or stays constant. I don't like to use the word equal. The reactants is on the same level as the products. The concentrations of both are constant. They are not going to change. So when you add more of something, if you add more reactants, you can see that on this little teeter-totter here, the reactant side has gone down because we've added more of it. So now it becomes heavier, it has more concentration to it. So in order to reestablish equilibrium, if you add more of something, it's gonna shift the opposite side so that we can get more product and even out our teeter-totter again. If we add more products though, and this side goes down because this side has gotten heavier, in order to reestablish equilibrium, it's gonna again shift to the opposite side so that we can make more reactant and even out our teeter-totter. So adding something is always gonna shift the, the equilibrium to the opposite side in order to reestablish equilibrium. This is just our example here where we have carbon monoxide and hydrogen gas. And in this reaction, you can see that if we increase this, if we increase the carbon monoxide, anytime you increase something, remember what we just discussed, it's gonna to shift to the opposite side. The reaction is gonna to shift to favor the forward reaction. So that means that the CH3OH concentration is gonna increase because we're making more products now. In order to make more product, the concentration of the H2 had to, to decrease so that we can make more product. Now, the reaction is going to, um, reach equilibrium again in which the concentrations of both things are not changing. So that's why K is going to be staying constant because we're going to reestablish that equilibrium where the concentrations of the product is staying constant, the concentration of the reactants is staying constant in that same ratio. When we remove something, maybe take either take some of the reactant away or if we take some of, some of the product away, the equilibrium is gonna shift in that direction because we've taken some of it away and the system wants to make more of that thing that we took away. So if we remove a reactant, it's gonna to shift to the left, shift towards the reactant side in order to make more of that reactant. If you take away some of the product, the reaction is gonna to shift to the right, the forward reaction so that we can make more product. And a good example of that is hemoglobin. So I know in the gas laws unit, we talked about atmospheric pressure and the difference of the atmospheric pressure at sea level versus when you're up in the mountains in Colorado, for example. So when you're up in the mountains, atmospheric pressure is low. So that means you're taking away some of that pure oxygen gas. 
And in order to reestablish equilibrium, this equilibrium is going to shift to the left so that we can try to make more oxygen. Well, hemoglobin job in the blood is to pick up oxygen and carry it around to your body cells. So if the reaction is, or the equilibrium is shifting to the left in order to try to make more oxygen, that means this here, the concentration of this, the oxyhemoglobin, is actually gonna decrease. And that's why you start to feel lightheaded and everything and feel a difference when you're up in the mountains because it's trying to reestablish that equilibrium and you don't have as much hemoglobin carrying oxygen around to your body cells. So let's take a look at some examples here. We've got example one, and these are all in your packet, A plus B yielding C and D. It's always gonna be the same way we've always written reactions where the reactants are on the left, the products are on the right. So if we add A or B, it means we're adding a reactant, so the equilibrium is gonna shift in the opposite direction, so to the right, in order to make more C and D. If we remove A and B, if we remove a reactant, it's gonna shift in the direction where we removed something. So the reverse reaction would be favored. We're gonna shift equilibrium to the left in order to make more A and B. If we add C and D, again, anytime you add something, it shifts, equilibrium shifts to the opposite side to reestablish equilibrium. So this way would have a shift to the left. If you remove C or D, it's gonna to shift to the right in order to make more of the thing that you took away. Example two uses an actual chemical reaction. So if we add carbon monoxide, carbon monoxide is on the product side. If you add a product, it's gonna shift in the opposite direction towards the reactant side, which is on the left side. So it's gonna to shift to the left. If we add carbon, carbon's a reactant. In order to reestablish equilibrium, it's gonna shift in the opposite direction. So it would shift to the product side to the right side. If we add AS406, again, that's a reactant. If you add a reactant, it's gonna to shift to the right side, to the product side, in order to make more of that. If you remove something, in this case, we're removing AS4. AS4 is a product. So in order to reestablish that equilibrium, it's gonna to shift to the right. This is a good video for y'all to watch, just to see how concentration affects equilibrium and how it's gonna shift the equilibrium is gonna shift in order to reestablish the equilibrium. So if you have a chance, watch this on your own time. Changes in temperature. Now this is the only stressor that we can do that's actually going to affect your K value. When you're looking at changes in temperature and how it's going to shift the equilibrium, I really do recommend writing the heat into your chemical reaction so that way you can see if it's a reactant or if it's a product. So here, endothermic reactions, mean that heat is a reactant. So that's why we've added heat over here onto the reactant side. That means your delta H is positive. So you wanna make sure you're reviewing kind of that information from the thermodynamics unit. So we treat heat just like it is another reactant or another product, depending on if it's an endothermic or exothermic reaction. So in this case, it's a reactant. So if you increase that, if it's basically saying you're increasing a reactant, the equilibrium is gonna shift, see? in the opposite direction to reestablish equilibrium. So that means the concentration of the CS2 is gonna increase and the concentration of the C and the S are gonna decrease. So in endothermic reactions, remember that K is equal to the products over the react reactants. So in this case, CS2 is increasing. So your product's concentration is increasing the concentration of your reactants is decreasing, so K is gonna get larger. With a decrease in temperature, so again, heat's over here, so decrease means you're removing it, so it's gonna shift in that direction in order to make more of it. So now, the concentrations of our carbon has increased, the concentration of our sulfur has increased, and the concentration of our CS2 has decreased. So when we're looking at the value of K, which is the concentration of the products over the concentration of the reactants, our product's concentration has gone down and our reactant's concentration has increased, so K is gonna get smaller. With exothermic reactions, it's just gonna be a little bit um, opposite because now heat is a product, it's on the product side, so that's when we have a negative delta H indicating that heat is being released. So when we have an increase in temperature, Anytime you add something to it, it shifts 
to the opposite side in order to reestablish equilibrium. So in this case, the water goes down, the oxygen increases, and the hydrogen increases. So K in this case, where we have products again over reactants, in this case, our product concentration goes down, our reactant concentration increases, so our K value is going to decrease because we have more on the denominator now. Opposite true though, if we have removing heat, if we remove heat and we take some of that away in order to reestablish equilibrium, our reaction is going to shift to the right, which means we make more water. We have less oxygen and less hydrogen, of course, because we had to make the water. So when we look at K, the concentration of our products over the concentration of our reactants, the concentration of the products has increased, the concentration of the reactants has decreased, so K is going to increase as well because the numerator has gotten larger. Another video here showing the effect of temperature change on equilibrium, so I recommend you guys watching this on your own time. So let's take a look at this here. So remember I said it's probably a good idea to write your heat into your reaction. So when you see example three, delta H is positive. Positive delta H means that it's an endothermic reaction. So it's gonna go on the reactant side. So write your heat in on the reactant side. So then if we add heat, we're adding a reactant, it's gonna to shift to the right in order to reestablish equilibrium. If we lower the temperature, if we take some of that heat away, it's gonna shift in that direction to make more heat, so it's gonna to shift to the left. Example four, delta H is negative. So since de delta H is negative, that means heat is a product because this is an exothermic reaction, so we put heat on the product side. So if we increase the temperature, that means we're adding a product, so it's gonna to shift to the left side, it's gonna to shift to the reactant side. If you remove heat, it's gonna to wanna to shift in that direction to reestablish that equilibrium, so it would shift to the right. Sorry, I showed the answer for number five already. But number five, heat is already written into your reaction. Heat's a reactant, so if we decrease the temperature, the reaction is gonna to shift to the left in order to reestablish equilibrium. Next is gonna be changing in pressure. So pressure changes are only going to affect the gaseous substances. So it doesn't matter about how much solids you have, how much uh, liquids you have, it just matters how much gas reactants and gas products you have in your reaction. So with pressure, we're not really, it's not always gonna be a foolproof uh, shifting to the left or shifting to the right answer like we saw with the endothermic, exothermic, adding and removing uh, reactants or products. In this case, we're looking at the number of gas particles. So if you increase the pressure in order to release that, relieve that stress, increasing the pressure means it's gonna to shift to whichever side has fewer gas particles. If you decrease the pressure in order to reestablish that equilibrium, it's gonna to shift to the side that has more gas. So you really have to take a look in, at your gas particles, how much you have to see which side it's gonna to shift to. So if we look at this, one thing that we have to keep in mind though is your gas laws. So an increase in container volume. So if you increase the volume, what happens to your pressure? The pressure goes down. If the pressure goes down, it's gonna to shift to whichever side has more gas in order to reestablish that stress about the pressure. So which side has more gas here? but well, you only have one gas substance, that's your chlorine, so it's gonna to shift to the left side. If you decrease the container volume, so again, this time we've got a decrease in the container volume, which means the pressure is going to go up because it's an inverse relationship, but for increasing the pressure, it's gonna to shift to the side that has less gas. So the side that has less gas is the side that has no gas in this case, which is the right side. So this one would shift to the right. Adding argon gas, anytime you have an inert gas, it doesn't affect the partial pressure of the gases that are already present in the system. So adding argon gas doesn't change the pressure of the chlorine gas at all, so it would have no effect. So inert gases, remember, are your noble gases. In example seven, everything is a gaseous 
uh, substance. So you want to look at the number of moles, use your coefficients. So if you decrease the container volume, decreasing the volume means that you're increasing the pressure. If you're increasing the pressure, the reaction is going to shift to the side that has less gas. So the side that has less gas is the right side, so it's going to shift to the right. Adding helium, helium is an inert gas, so it's not going to affect the equilibrium. Example eight, everything is a gas. And the thing to make note of in number eight here is that you have four moles of gas on your reactant side. You have four moles of gas on the product side. So since the amount of gas is the same, doing anything to the volume of the container or the pressure of the container is not going to affect the equilibrium because you have the same amount of gas on both sides. Catalysts, we talked about catalysts um, in the last unit in kinetics. A catalyst is added to lower your activation energy to get the reaction to happen quicker. Um, it doesn't actually affect equilibrium because you'll see here when you looked at the product side, you end up at the same place if you use a catalyst or you don't use a catalyst. So using a catalyst doesn't affect anything. In example nine, we're going to go over everything, kind of mix everything together, make sure we understand. So here, if the temperature is increased, look at your delta H. Figure out which side your heat should go on. So delta H is negative, which means heat is a product. So if we're increasing the temperature, it's going to shift to the opposite side to relieve that stress. So it's going to shift to the left. If you add helium gas, helium is a noble gas. It's an inert gas. So it's not going to change the equilibrium. So no change here. Water vapor is added. Water vapor is a reactant. So if you add a reactant, it's going to shift to the opposite side in order to relieve that stress. So it's going to shift to the right. Gaseous carbon dioxide is removed. Carbon dioxide is a product. If you remove something, it shifts in that direction in order to make more of that. So it's going to shift to the right. Catalyst is added. Catalysts do not affect equilibrium. So no change here. Example 10, oxygen is added. Oxygen is a product. So when you add some oxygen, it's going to shift to the opposite side anytime you add something. So it'll shift to the left. Volume is decreased. If you decrease the volume, you increase the pressure. When you increase the pressure, it's going to go to the side that has less gas. So which side has less gas in this reaction? The reactant side. So since you're going to shift to the reactant side, it's going to shift to the left. Argon gas is added. Argon, noble gas, no change. Temperature is decreased. Let's look at that delta H. Delta H is positive, so that means heat is a reactant. So if you decrease the temperature, it's going to shift in that direction. So it's going to shift to the reactant side. It's going to shift left. Gaseous carbon, or sorry, sulfur dioxide is removed. Sulfur dioxide is on the product side. It's on the right side. So if you take some of that away, it's going to shift in that direction to reestablish. So shift to the right. In this case, this example is looking at oxygen concentration and the effect on K. So in order to determine what's going to happen with the concentration of a substance in the reaction or to the value of K, you have to first figure out which way it's going to shift so you can answer the question. So if you add NO2, NO2 is a reactant. So if you add some of that, it's going to shift to the right. If you shift to the right, what's going to happen to that O2 concentration? Well, going to shifting to the product side means you're going to end up making more oxygen. And any change in concentration, removing something, adding something, does not affect the value of K. N2 is removed, N2 is a product. If you remove something, it shifts in that same direction. So it's going to shift to the right. We're going to increase O2. So our value of O2 is going to increase as well. Again, changing concentration does not change the value of K. The volume is halved. So if you half the volume, what happens to the pressure? The pressure increases. If the pressure increases, it's going to shift to the side that has less gas. Which side in this reaction has less gas? The reactant side. So it's going to shift to the left, which means the concentration of the O2 is going to decrease. And changes in pressure, changes in volume are not going to affect our value of K. 
helium is added, helium is an inert gas, so it's not gonna have any change in anything. The temperature is increased, so it does say that this is an exothermic reaction. If it's an exothermic reaction, where does that mean heat is going? Heat is a product. So if heat's a product and we increase the temperature, it's gonna to shift to the opposite side, so it's gonna to shift to the left, which means the concentration of the O2 is going to decrease. So now let's think about this value of K. If the reaction is shifting to the left, what do we have more of? The concentration of the products is actually going to decrease. The concentration of the reactants is going to increase. And since K is products over reactants and we're making more reactants, K is going to get smaller. A catalyst is added, no change whatsoever when you add a catalyst. So that's everything. You do have some practice on pages three and four in your packet about Le Chatelier's. So reach out to your teacher and let us know if you guys have any questions while you're working on this and good luck.